I'm Micah. I'm Nobu. I'm Chris. We're trying to make it across the country on a bus powered by used cooking oil. We're seeking out backyard innovators who build earth-friendly inventions that work. It's a road trip experiment where anything can happen. We'll be traveling through New England, but before we leave New York State, we want to meet John Corey to find out how he uses sound waves for refrigeration. Hey guys, I was you'd make it. Come nice. on in. Great space. Yeah, this is the workshop where you build. This build. is where we do most of the development in this place, yeah? It's a friend of mine who suggested we look you up. Yeah. He had heard about an ice cream company wanting to do thermoacoustic refrigeration. Thermoacoustics is the interaction of temperature and sound, thermoacoustics. So what we can do is we can either create a temperature difference and create a sound, or we can create a sound and drive a temperature difference, which is what we do for refrigeration. They're all conversion from one form of energy okay. to the other. That's right. Yeah. We really do two conversions. You just said two. That's right, two conversions. We start with temperature, we go through acoustics, right. and into electricity, right? So there's two conversions, three forms of energy. There's all sorts of things that need cooling, from buildings to blood. Thermoacoustics is a way of doing it in a green, clean way. No oil, no ozone threatening, no global warming potential. Yeah, this is one of our little cryo coolers right here. This is the driver, so you can use the electroacoustic. And then what's this part? This is the thermoacoustic part. So this takes the sound and turns it into heat pumping. This part gets cold this part gets hot. You know, normally when you uh, squeeze something, it gets hot. And when you expand it, it gets cold. And what is sound but a lot of compression and expansion? Uh, normally, the amount of pressure change is pretty tiny, otherwise your ears are bleed. But temperature change goes with it is pretty small, too. But we've learned to magnify that so that we can get a big temperature difference from the sound. Sound. So yeah. there's, there's actually a temperature change as sound changes. Well, right. whenever you squeeze a gas, its temperature goes up. Whenever you expand it, its temperature goes down. So pressure up, temperature up. Pressure down, temperature down. Here I put three, three rubber bands together. Imagine each one of these is a gas molecule somewhere in front of my piston. My hand is the piston. If I close it off, that's like not letting this move. Mm -hmm. Now when I compress it, the volume goes down, up, down, up, down. Temperature goes up, down. Nothing very interesting happens. Mm -hmm. But when I start going this frequency, I get nothing happening. But there's a certain frequency called resonance where I begin to get a relative motion. You see that relative motion? Mm -hmm. Notice the rubber band is compressed at the top of the stroke yeah. and expanded at the bottom of the stroke. Yeah. That means this part will get hot, that part will get cold. End of game. Oh, Does that because, help? Yeah. yeah. The gas is compressed here, it's expanded yeah. here. At the same time. At the same yeah. time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. It's the wave. And if you know during the cycle that this part is going to be hot and this part is going to be cold, then you can work with those two areas right. to make so your design it for And then so you know where to, to draw the heat out because you know where this heat lives. Now you and, got it. And you know where to distribute the cold. Yeah. yeah. Right. The rubber band. The rubber band did yeah. it. Yeah. So we've been running our cooler now for a little while. So when I lift this out of its little stand, it's just holding it here. You can see it's going to be pretty darn cold. And uh, you get a flavor for what we can do here. Whoa. Whoa. All right. So you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to touch that. No, do not put your tongue on that now. It's really hard to get you inside the refrigerator right. to see the sound turn into heat pumping. Right. But I can do it the other way. I have a, just this part of the system, and I can put heat to it and make the sound. That's actually a lot more fun. It might help you visualize what's going on in there. Right. I'll bring this along just in case. OK, good deal. Here's another version of one of those. So this is a little cap that's not cut in half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to excite it with a temperature difference. And when I get it hot enough, it's going to sing for you. I'm going to excite this by getting enough heat into it that the molecules start dancing around. And the ones that are dancing the right beat are going to excite each other, and it's going to resonate acoustically, and we're going to get some sound out of it. Boy, it's getting hot. I don't know, guys. It's very hot. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. You thought I was skinny, didn't you? Now I'll turn off the flame so you can hear it. Yeah. So that, when it's mounted on here, that sound can drive my pistons backwards. And what was a loudspeaker becomes a microphone and the electricity comes out. You're saying that it's, it's more efficient to use natural gas to heat up uh, a device like this and to generate electricity from it than it is to get the heat and use that to heat a room with natural well, gas. Well, you'll still have the heat. So you put the flames on here, which are red hot. You make the electricity here. Mm -hmm. And the heat that's coming off this system still heats your house. Mm. You get a lot better use of the fuel that way. Another green advantage. Is that something that you're working on? You betcha. You're developing that <laughs> Absolutely. technology? Absolutely. That's great. 
So it works both ways. It works as refrigeration, it works as a generator. You can't scale this up to a power plant size, but you don't want to. You want to put this in a home. Micro. 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 And it only makes sense in a home because you don't have to change the oil. There isn't any oil. You don't have to change the filters. There's no filters. It's a permanent wear-free sealed system. So you can put it in the basement and forget about it for 20 years. This is the electroacoustic part. You can push on these and you can see the movement. Mm -hmm. Right, they're springy. They want to operate at a certain frequency. Then we turn this on, and one thing you'll notice is when I turned it on, it didn't immediately jump to full stroke. Because you dial it in. No, it's a resonant. Think about oh, pushing yeah, your yeah. child on yeah. a swing. You give it a little push, and you wait for it to build up. So the space between the pistons is alternately getting squeezed and expanded. And then it leaks out this little hole here. Right, right. and this, this... And gets delivered into this thermoacoustic section. That's right. right. And if you wanted to increase the refrigeration, you just turn the amplitude of the wave up. Crank so, it up. And that creates not a different frequency, but just a larger wave. So That's that correct. More intensity. More intensity. Yeah. Got it. Right. Now, this might look a little more familiar to you. Kind of looks like a refrigerator, because it is. Happens to be a military box, so it's this lovely color green. But our thermoacoustic unit is mounted right on top here. You can see that same double drive. And the thermal parts are reaching right down inside. So you're going to join a small club here. Not too many people have had a chance to drink a thermoacoustically cool beverage before. Well, there you go. You can see the insides like any other fridge. Up here, you can see the fins. The heat exchanger you were looking for on the cryogenic unit is now here. There's a lot more there. There's big fins and a fan to move it around. But every time a refrigerating machine turns off, the part that it's been made cold, all the cold metal starts to soak back to the room temperature. Yeah. And all the hot metal starts to soak back. So the first thing when you turn it on again is you've got to make, cool the machine itself. How many watts of electricity would you save by using the thermoacoustic system? Up in our break room, we have an, a conventional refrigerator for sandwiches and things, and we keep a power meter on both, and they're running about even now. Right. Even if this is neck and neck with a regular fridge and electricity, you've got no CFCs and no yeah. hydrofluorocarbons. None of that, and not even any oil. So yeah. for from a, an atmospheric perspective, a greenhouse the gas bigger perspective, picture, that's, that's right. That's yeah. exactly right. We can't keep making fridges the same way we've been doing it, either legally or from the health of the planet. It's beer o'clock. What'll you have? Uh, a beer? <laughs> I think we can arrange that. Bottle or can? I'll have a can. You sure. got it. Thanks very much. I'll have a thermoacoustically chilled brew. A thermoacoustically yeah. chilled brew. I think that's only appropriate. Well, you know what you say. Use thermoacoustics to get ahead.